Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Mario So and today's video I wanted to show you how you can create this cool morphing transition literally in just one click. So it's great to see you back here on the channel. Thanks for hanging out. If you're new here, I create weekly content on filmmaking, video editing, gear review, and all of that fun stuff. If that's something you think you'll be into, hit that subscribe button and that'll be greatly appreciated. So this morphing transition is actually very easy to do. This transition can actually be found in Premiere Pro in the Transitions tab. And this transition was rolled out a few years ago and the main purpose for this transition is for interviews. And the way this is supposed to work is that when you're cutting interviews and you're cutting parts that you don't need in the specific interview, you would add this transition in between those two talking head interview shots and let Premiere Pro sort of morph that person to hide the cut. But in my experience, this doesn't really work most of the time and it actually creates a little bit of a weird stuttery lag effect, which is not desirable. And so in all honesty, I've never used this transition effect when I'm cutting interviews. I use B-roll to layer over any cuts that I want to hide. But there's another cool practical function that you can give this transition. As you saw earlier, this transition can be used to create this sort of morphing transition to morph one object to a different object. And when done correctly, it can be quite cool without having to create an overcomplicated effect. And to do this effect, you're going to need two shots. The first shot with your first object that you want to use. The second shot will be the object that you want your first object to morph into. In order for this to work, your camera is going to be static. So on a tripod at the same location for both shots. You also need to have the same lighting in both shots. The next thing to keep in mind is to put your second object in the second shot in the same spot where your original object was. You can use gaff tape or just tape just to mark the position of your first object so that you can match it and place the second object on the same spot. This is going to be key for this effect to work well. So I find that this effect works best for objects. I tried it with humans, with myself, and it wasn't too bad as long as your subject is not moving and is able to keep almost the exact same location on the second shot from the first shot. So let's jump on over Premiere Pro and I'll show you how we can edit this effect. So I have this first clip right here and then the second clip right here that starts right away. This actually works pretty cool as well as a quick jump cut since both objects are on the same spot. So let's apply that effect into these two sets of clips. So under effects right here, you can quickly just type morph cut right here and you can drag it in between both layers. You can also find morph cut if you go into video transitions then dissolve it under that group of transitions. So this clip doesn't work if it's just applied to one clip it has to be in between two clips. So we can go and select the transition here from the timeline and under effect controls up here we can go and alignment go center at cut. And right here, you can adjust how long you want this transition to be. And we'll let Premiere Pro analyze it and do its thing. And we'll come back and see what it looks like. This is quite a heavy transition and it takes Premiere Pro a little bit of time to analyze it. So it will take you some time depending on the speed of your computer. Another thing that you should keep in mind when you do this effect is that you should use manual focus for this. As soon as you have your first product place, Make sure that you focus on that and then switch to manual focus to make sure that the focus stays the same for both shots. And another thing that you could do is to simulate movement is to pre-compose these two clips and to add keyframes for position or for scale. So you can click and select both of these clips, right click, go to nest, and let's just name it morph transition. Now you can manipulate these two clips as one clip right here from this main timeline. Let's try doing scale. We can click on the stopwatch for scale right here. Move this timeline indicator to the end of that clip and type 105 to give it a, a very subtle zoom in. And this is what it looks like. 
and if you wanted to give it a little bit of a fake slider move you can also adjust the position on x for this clip let's increase the size of this clip first to say about 105 so that we're able to adjust that parallel or that sideways movement a little bit so let's click on the stopwatch for position and adjust the clip to start over here and let's move this timeline indicator all the way to the end of that clip you see that very subtle slider movement and then you get your morph transition so that's a pretty cool way of adding motion and making this cool effect even more dynamic Obviously, if you have a motorized slider, you could also do this if you set your slider to the same speed for both shots and just repeat the shot over and over for the first object and the second object and then just matching that position, you're able to get a similar effect as well. If you are in Final Cut, I believe that the Final Cut equivalent of this transition is called Flow. So you can check that out and it works the exact same way as Premiere Pro. I'm not sure what the equivalent is in DaVinci Resolve, but I'm sure there is something similar. So let me know in the comments below if you think you'll be using this trick in one of your future videos. So this is it for today's video. If you learned something new, please hit that like button. It will greatly be appreciated. And that is all for today, guys. Until next time.